This video on demand presentation of Big Red Wrap Up is made possible by the following sponsors. Big Red Wrap Up thanks these sponsors. Coming up tonight on NET's Big Red Wrap Up. It was a quiet week as Nebraska prepared during the bye for Wisconsin. We'll take a look at the road ahead for this Nebraska team. We'll also talk about another Nebraska team starting their season this weekend with Nebraska men's basketball head coach Tim Miles. Sean Callahan will also be here to update us on Big Red recruiting. I'm Kevin Kugler and welcome to NET's Big Red Wrap Up. Lots to cover, lots to talk about tonight, but before we dive into all of the hard hitting football and tonight basketball talk on Big Red Wrap Up, just a quick note of thanks to those who have served or are serving. One of my heroes in my life was my grandfather who served during World War II as so many did in that greatest generation and was always very proud of his service. And I'm very proud for all of you who have served or are serving right now. We thank you for the chance to sit here and do something silly like this. We appreciate the sacrifices that you or family members have made. And, you know, hug a vet today. It's a it's a good thing to do. We've we've been wandering around Lincoln and Omaha today just hugging random people on the street. That's what we do. <laughs> Joining me as always, Adrian Fiala and Blake Lawrence. It may not be the most hygienic thing to do, but well, we've been doing it because we all, and I know you all share that sentiment, this is a, a day in which we all just take a moment and remember some of the sacrifices that have been made. And a big thank you to those folks who have gone out of their way to serve this country. Kevin, there's a reason they call it the greatest generation. And without their work, without their sacrifice, without their gift of life, quite frankly, uh, we probably wouldn't be doing the things we do today. So, yeah, everybody out there, echo what Kevin said. I'm sure, Blake, you have the same thing. Yeah, I can say the same. Yeah. And, and yeah. knowing that everyone has a member of their family or someone that they know dearly that is, you know, protecting what we're able to do here in the United States, it's a great day. So happy Veterans you Day bet. to all those. And go ha hug a vet. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I said it. Yeah. Hug a vet. Hashtag hug a vet. <laughs> absolutely. You're a major part of our show, and we certainly want to hear from you tonight as well. So be sure you get in touch with us. There are the Fijis, Nebraska's five. Gamma Delta standing by in our call center. Take your comments and questions tonight while they enjoy some Valentino's pizza. Leading the call center, as always, our NET Sports intern, Josh. There are lots of other ways to get a hold of us tonight, and be sure you do so. Email, Facebook, Twitter. We're keeping our eye on all of those. Don't forget, also, you can download our NET Nebraska app. Watch live streaming of our show. Catch up on previous episodes. Stream live games like the NSAA High School Volleyball Championships this weekend, huh? Take NET with you wherever you go. When you're out wandering around, make sure you've got NET on your smartphone or your tablet so you can keep an eye on everything that's going on. Now, let's talk some football. Let's get some stuff going because this is a big week for Nebraska. Yes, coming off of a bye week. Yes, nothing happened to wrap up on Big Red Wrap Up, but... Nebraska is ready to go, or at least getting ready to go, to Wisconsin this weekend for a huge showdown to start the run-up to the end of the season. And, you know, there's some debate, aid as to whether or not this is a big game, not a big game. Feels like a pretty big game in these parts because if you don't win this game, either Wisconsin or Nebraska, you really put yourself behind the eight ball moving forward to try to win a division and get yep. to a Big Ten championship. Kevin, if Nebraska doesn't win this, this game this Saturday, uh, not only behind the eight ball, but a long ways, I think, behind the eight ball. So it'll be tough for them to, to really salvage what they want to salvage out of the season. So they really need to step up and, and get the job done. As we said earlier in the show, and I said this week on my shows, the foundation for the rest of the year and to try to get to uh, that championship game is really resting on Saturday afternoon in Madison, Wisconsin. Tough place to play, as you said. Our good friend Barry Alvarez has that program and has had that program rolling for a number of years, and he mirrors that program after this one. He knows what it takes to win up there. So this is a team, uh, Wisconsin is a team that will come after us big time in a big way. Uh, Blake said earlier about their defense. Their defense really has been the salvation for their team uh, thus far. Earlier in the year, uh, they weren't so good. They weren't playing all that well on offense. They've kind of flipped that around the last three games. Joel Stave, he wasn't so good. Now he's come, he's come around, Kevin. He's playing a lot better. So this is going to be a, um, a game that 
I really don't know what some of these answers are right now. I'm looking forward to watching this game. But we, we need to get this game. Nebraska needs to get this game and then be ready for another big game. If we get it, Minnesota's coming up. That's going to be – I said four weeks ago, Minnesota, watch out for this bunch. That's a tough football team. Yeah, they're playing. So, Iowa, I'm not sure about. But Minnesota, I am. Now they're playing good football right now. The news out of practice today for Nebraska, Amir Abdullah was practicing. He was full go. He had a knee brace on at practice today. And, and Blake, I know anybody who's played this game has had their share of injuries over the course of time. For a running back playing with a knee brace, yes, it's good he was practicing, but – you're a little concerned if he's got to play with that knee brace on right. from cutting and comfort, correct? Well, I think if Nebraska fans could just look back a couple years, Rex Burkhead's senior year, he wore a brace on his knee throughout the entire season. And that was not the same Rex Burkhead that we saw play, you know, leading up to his senior year. So if you see Amir with that brace on, it's going to change the way that he thinks. And Amir needs to trademark that jump cut and get downfield where he plants his foot quick and gets upfield with a brace on. He'll be limited on how many times he can do that. And so this is a defense that he's going up against, this, this rush defense, this, this team that Wisconsin's put together. This is the number one defense in the nation. And I, I think that we've kind of not talked enough about that. This is a tough team, especially if the running game's not going for Nebraska. It's going to put some challenges out there against a team that defends against the pass pretty darn well to, uh, as well. Well, you've got to look to the quarterback for Nebraska and Tommy Armstrong to have a big game. And we've talked about this seemingly ad nauseum for the last few weeks. Mistakes are killer in close games and on the road. And we've seen Nebraska over the last couple of weeks have a little tendency to be mistake prone, especially in that center quarterback exchange. You can't afford to have those kind of mistakes against Wisconsin because Melvin Gordon, Corey Clement, those guys right. are gonna be able to take advantage of a short field. They don't, you don't want them going on a short field. They're gonna score touchdowns. Kevin, those two players, are first in the FBS as far as combined rushing. I mean, first in the nation. These two guys can really haul, haul the old pig, as we used to say. I talked with Jack Stark. A lot of you out there remember Jack Stark as the team psychologist for Nebraska for, I think, about 16 years here about uh, this fumbling snap situation. And he's, he's faced it before in his career. And he said it's, it's, mer it's merely a, a situation where you go through a, a relaxation exercise. And I'm thinking relaxation on the field. That's <laughs> right. pretty tough to do. But uh, well, Blake used to do yoga on the field. <laughs> yeah, That's I, how he'd well, get I was on the bench, <laughs> so I could do and it. And it worked. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah, worked. Did, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, you were but, really uh, relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jack was talking about you. Uh, it, it's a it's a relaxation exercise, and how you you visualize the situation. But you have to relax your system, relax your body. Maybe. Maybe some guys heard that. Maybe they've gone after some help to, to try to solve that problem. But you've got to have that problem solved. We're not going to do very much against Wisconsin's defense, as Blake said, if we don't have that problem solved. So let's hope they get that job done. Yeah, let me, let me play devil's advocate here because the, the flip side of this is people say, well, Wisconsin's gotten better, but who have they played over the last few weeks? Maryland, Rutgers, Purdue. Right. They've not played teams that have been dominant in the Big Ten Conference, which is true, but what they've done is gone out and taken care of the teams on the schedule the way they're supposed to take care of them. Right. And I think that Nebraska, you could say that the last three games that Nebraska's played have been against you know, Rutgers, Purdue, Northwestern, teams, you know, that aren't, aren't going to really wow anyone when you think about the Big Ten. So Wisconsin coming to this game, I mean, they've got a lot to prove as well. And they're snuck back in the top 20 with the rankings. And, you know, they fought LSU really, really hard their first game of the year. I think that a lot of Nebraska fans watched that game. So across the board, Wisconsin's used to this these types of games. And, and they know that at home they have an advantage. And last time Nebraska played on the road in the Big Ten, Michigan State gifted Nebraska some turnovers early in that game. Nebraska failed to capitalize on that, and that's something you can't have happen because uh, we have to take advantage of every opportunity Wisconsin gets us. And I'm, I'm hoping that Amir is healthy and can carry the offense. Defensively, I think that as long as we kind of force Wisconsin to pass, we have a chance. Yeah. They're fourth in the nation in rushing, Blake, 119th in passing. Mm-hmm. Kind of unusual, quite frankly. Right, right. But if we can force them into stop the running game, as you talk about, as we always do, get them into that passing game, who knows what happens there. I think they're about one-to-one -one in, terms of, in terms of TD. Kevin, you probably know better than we do, but one-to-one uh, -one in terms of TD interception ratio. 
And you like that because if I'm a defensive coordinator and a player, as, as you remember, you want that. Right. You want to see the ball in the air because he has a tendency, Stave has had a tendency over the years to be a little long mm -hmm. a lot. So put the ball in the air, be ready to make an interception, and then go with it. Let's check the results of last week's sideline survey. We asked you last week after Amir's injury, how do you think Nebraska will finish the final three games of this season? 50% of you think Nebraska still has a shot to go 3-0. 33% say 2-1, 14% 1-2, and 3% of you think that Nebraska's doomed. Never going to win again. Here's this week's all-new sideline survey. Which game is the biggest in the Huskers' final three regular season games? Is it Wisconsin, Minnesota, or Iowa? Many of you voting the way I would vote, Wisconsin. Just go to our Facebook or wrap-up website and cast your vote in our very unscientific sideline survey. Get you our trivia question for the week. Our first trivia question is here. Be the first correct caller, and you will receive that T-shirt, the big red wrap-up T-shirt size extra large, and the legend of Little Red. Saturday will be Nebraska's first trip back to Camp Randall Stadium to take on the Wisconsin Badgers since their first game as Big Ten members in 2011. That game didn't go too well for the Huskers. Wisconsin rudely welcomed them with a 48-17 drubbing. Nebraska quarterback Taylor Martinez struggled during the late second and early third quarters, throwing key interceptions as Nebraska tried to keep pace against a Badger offense led by future Super Bowl champion Russell Wilson. Our first question tonight is how many interceptions did quarterback Taylor Martinez have in Nebraska's first game against Wisconsin as a member of the Big Ten? Be the first correct caller and you'll receive the wrap-up tee and the legend of Little Red. Each Tuesday night, we're fortunate to be here with you on Big Red Wrap-Up and we come on the air right after the college football playoff rankings come out, which is getting a lot of conversation in the world of Twitter, Facebook, and everywhere else right now. Nebraska had a horrible bye week, apparently, because they <laughs> went from 13 to 16 in the college football playoff rankings. Five of the top 25 teams, however, now are from the Big Ten Conference. And you look at that, and there's a lot of consternation and concern. If you're a Nebraska fan, woe is us, woe is us. Here's, here's the, the obvious thing. Miami plays Florida State this weekend, and Florida State, while undefeated, has had some foibles this year where they've looked beatable. Mm -hmm. If Miami wins, that certainly bolsters Nebraska's non-conference win. Right. And if Nebraska beats Wisconsin, that gives them another nice win. They still would have Minnesota as a top 25 team. They'd still have Iowa. And then they'd have Ohio State if they make it that far through the final three games. And Ohio State, as you see, is eighth in the country. I think you have to just kind of take a deep breath if you're a team like Nebraska. Dirk Chatlin of the Omaha World Herald with a tweet earlier, it said, just a reminder, on November 10th last year, Michigan State was 16th in the BCS rankings. Wow. And they probably would have made a playoff last year had there been one in place. They were certainly a top four team at the end of the year. I think everybody has to just sort of take a deep breath, relax. There's a lot of football still to be played. Nebraska has to win three difficult games. If they do that, then they have to win a fourth difficult game against the top ten team. What I like about the college football playoff is how much they take into account that affects these rankings. When I first saw that Nebraska dropped three spots in the, in the college football playoff rankings, I thought, well, what can you do? It's a bye weekend. But what happened on the bye weekend is a team that Nebraska was kind of hanging their one loss on and saying it's one of the top teams in the nation, Michigan State, got walloped by Ohio State. And Ohio State, you know, moving up to, to eight, you can't put Nebraska in front of Michigan State because if you watch that game one-on-one, -on -one, Nebraska was not better than Michigan State. So a lot of these things come into play. Now, if Nebraska continues to prove and, and win these games, I think they can definitely move up top ten and get into contention. But that's the type of, you know, details they're looking at in this committee. I, I think that's going to impact it throughout the rest of the year. Blake, uh Kevin, do you think that Michigan State loss that we had, um, is there any quality to that loss for Nebraska? Oh, sure. They're still a top 15 team. Okay. I mean, I, right. think, that's, so, I think that's still, as, as quality losses go, if you have to have one on the road in East Lansing by five, as it turned out, you know. You, you, now, you wonder, when you see this poll, Nebraska being 16th with just that one loss, you wonder, had Moore made that catch, would they <laughs> oh, be as an unbeaten whoa. team? Yeah. Where yeah. would they be? Exactly. Because obviously the Big Ten doesn't get a lot of respect but, from this committee. Right. They'd probably still be on the outside looking in, even let's as go, an undefeated team. Right. Let's go super hypothetical. All right. All right, I love this. <laughs> we'll let's say we went out. Let's okay. say we went yes. out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And at the end, we've... 12-1, we've and one, you beat yeah. Ohio State, Wisconsin, and you've got Minnesota, this, and Iowa. You've got this great 
is that the right word to use? Great loss? Yeah. Not a great loss. So a quality you got loss. A quality loss against Michigan State by five. Uh, what happens? What 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 goes? I mean, I, that's I man, I'd love to see that. What's, what's the SEC look like at that point? Yeah, what about yeah. the Big Twelve? Yeah. You know, I, there's so many variables in this, and I, I mean, it's great for discussion purposes, but I think you've just all got to kind of everybody's got to kind of relax a little bit and wait and see what happens. It, it's it's like getting worked up about, and Tim Miles is going to join us a little bit, it's like getting worked up about bracketology in mid-February. <laughs> right. Joe Lenardi comes out yeah. with bracketology, and you're wringing yeah. your hands, and you're throwing your arms in the air. Oh, it's over. we we, we got no no chance. You're still going to play games. Yeah, and I, I think that right now, Nebraska fans, we got to worry about this weekend because this is a challenging opponent. Wisconsin is going to come and, and put everything out there. If Nebraska wins this, then we can talk about, oh, Nebraska should be ranked a lot higher and whatnot. But... Another another thing is is when you look at the final end of the year rankings, if Nebraska wins this game, wins beats Minnesota, we're playing Ohio State in the Big Ten championship. I just want to know, like, how do you think that that game would look? Did you get a chance to see Ohio State this? I weekend? did, I did. Pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pretty it scary. would be scary. Yeah. And like as a fan, you if if we're full strength, yeah, if we're full bore with our ball club and they're full bore with their ball club, I think you're talking about. A seven-point game either way. Right. And that's well, about it. You want to get to the Big Ten Championship. Of course oh, you do. That's yeah. always the goal. But if Nebraska doesn't win this weekend and then Wisconsin has to face Ohio State at the Big Ten Championship and Nebraska avoids the opportunity to get walloped by Ohio State on national television, it could bode well. <laughs> Such and a I, you negative individual, Blake. That if you want. <laughs> Such a negative individual. I, you told me to say that. Blake <laughs> does not want to play Ohio State. He doesn't think you should I don't. want to play as a Nebraska fan either. <laughs> as Nebraska <laughs> continues to celebrate 125 years of Husker football, let's take a look back at the key role that Memorial Stadium has played in the past 125 years. In 125 years of Husker football, Nebraska fans have made Memorial Stadium one of the best atmospheres in college football. Since its dedication in 1923, Memorial Stadium has had several expansions and renovations, increasing the stadium capacity from 31,080 to 91,585. In 1962, Nebraska started its ongoing NCAA record for consecutive sellouts. The 125th sellout was on September 24, 1983, when the number one ranked Huskers faced UCLA. The Bruins jumped to an early lead in the first half. The kick is good, they score, UCLA 10, Nebraska nothing. With a 14-10 lead in the third quarter, Nebraska was looking to score when Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rogier made the famous two-yard touchdown run. That unforgettable play was the first of four touchdowns on four consecutive possessions in Nebraska's 42-10 victory over the UCLA Bruins, making the 125th sellout an unforgettable Husker 125. Let's move from Memorial Stadium to Pinnacle Bank Arena because next up we're joined by head coach Tim Miles to talk all things Nebraska ball. But when we go to break, Let's enjoy some images from the season so far, courtesy Aaron Babcock from Hale Varsity. Stay with us. We're back in just a moment.
Well, this game is huge. Um, to get to where we want to go, we can't afford any losses pretty much. So uh, it's pretty much the biggest game of the season. You got to play good team defense to to play against an offense like this, very disciplined. Comes down to execution. Team that executes the best will win the football game. No question about it. You know, it was a bitter taste in our mouth that we haven't been able to, to get rid of since then. But, you know, this game will be that great opportunity to do so. Welcome back to NET's Big Red Wrap Up. I'm Kevin Kugler. We've got a winner in our first trivia question. Congratulations to Jim Mattia. He knew the answer to this question. Three, the number of interceptions Taylor Martinez threw against Wisconsin in that 2011 game, all within a six minute span. Now, tonight's second trivia question open to email, Facebook, and Twitter. Have the first correct answer. You'll receive a copy of Hale Varsity's 2014 yearbook and the Big Red Wrap Up t shirt, size extra large. Last time Nebraska entered a game with an 8 1 record, it was in their final year in the Big 12. That game against Kansas saw the Black Shirts outmuscle a struggling Jayhawk offense. Tonight's second question is How many yards did Nebraska's defense limit Kansas to in that 2010 game? Have the first correct answer out of email, Facebook, Twitter. You'll receive Hale Varsity's 2014 yearbook and the wrap-up tee. Well, even though Nebraska and Maryland don't play each other as Big Ten opponents in football this year, we thought we'd at least introduce you to the new kid on the block in our Big Ten bio. Joining the Big Ten Conference this season from the east is the University of Maryland. Located in College Park, Maryland, the university was founded in 1856. Considered a public Ivy institution, Maryland boasts an enrollment of over 37,000 students and holds strong research partnerships with the federal government. Nicknamed the Terrapins, after the Diamondback Terrapin native to Maryland, the team's mascot is named Tesuto, which is Latin for turtle. The Terps, who call Bird Stadium home, left the Atlantic Coast Conference as a founding member after 62 years. Head coach Randy Etzel leads the Terrapins into the Big Ten Conference. Behind the dynamic play of wide receiver Stephon Diggs, who ranks third in the Big Ten in receptions per game. Maryland and Nebraska have never faced each other. That will change in 2016, as the Terrapins come to Lincoln in the first ever meeting between the two schools. Well, we're excited to be joined in the studio by Nebraska men's head basketball coach, Tim Miles. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you guys having me here. We even switched out the old football and got a little round well, ball in it's there. It's hoops time now. I know. Right? We're, we're shifting yeah. gears. We're leaving Memorial Stadium. We're going to you guys because ready or not, you got to play games Sunday. I'm done going to football games. It's too cold out, man. <laughs> I mean, uh, sorry. But uh, we're, we're in. We're ready to go Sunday. We play Northern Kentucky. We've got our preseason uh, uh, practices through our guys are tired of beating on each other. Uh, we've had our scrimmage, uh, our secret scrimmage. And then, of course, an exhibition. If, if you're talking about it, it's really not a secret yeah, scrimmage. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> yeah. I can tell you a lot about it, but, uh, yeah, but know, none but, but, of it no. could be or would be true. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I was I'm really looking forward to it. I thought our guys had a, a great week of practice uh, leading up to our exhibition game, and we went out and just started awfully. And, and now this week we've been pretty good again, so who knows what's going to happen on Sunday. Tim, you mentioned uh, playing against the same guys every Every day in practice, if football was always pounded on the same, is it the same way in basketball? Oh, today same deal? was same today deal? was a brutal. Uh. I mean, it was just like if you stopped and and tried to get them under control, it would have been no fun. But uh, <laughs> yeah, they were. Uh, it, it got really physical today. We're trying to throw some different things at the top seven guys, yeah. and so you know they kind of don't like it when it's not so easy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it, it's it's enjoyable, but it's been uh, it's been good. You got guys like Andrew White, to a transfer from Kansas, Virginia yeah. Player of the Year, who's redshirting, mm -hmm. and he and Petaway are having these little epic battles going back and forth. It's a lot of fun. All right, I'm already getting questions on social media about about the yeah. The is it November or is it no, just you know, something new for Tim uh, Miles? It's a uh, midlife crisis. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, probably last another three or four days till it starts itching. Yeah, you know? and then we uh, and then it'll go. Yeah, okay. I, a couple weeks ago I, started, I let it go for a week and then I let it go for a few more days and then. Is your wife uh, a fan? 
No. Okay. No. no. <laughs> I don't think she's a fan anyway, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, I don't blame her. You know. Uh, we, I know we're not. Gonna, we can't really talk about it, but you're going to get some guys, to, hopefully, to sign on the dotted line as the week goes on this week. And I'm not going to ask you specific questions, but just on a general basis, did the success Nebraska had last year, when you went on the road for recruiting, has it made a difference? Are people's eyes open more about what Nebraska basketball has to offer than maybe when you first walked in the door? Well, I'll give you a story about that. You know, when I first got here, uh, the first thing we wanted to do is what I call a parade. We wanted everybody we could get uh, recruiting-wise on campus. I didn't care if it was a 2017 fifth best player who didn't have hair under his arms yet. I don't, it didn't matter, right? <laughs> From whatever state, we were going to get him on campus. And we got Jaleel Okafor on campus, right? Who's, you know, maybe the player of the year this year. And, yeah. and we know Jaleel, and we've known him before because I had Ron Coleman, who was my assistant at the time. So Jaleel comes on campus, and it's the rain out of spring, the spring football game oh, where yeah. it yeah. storms. So these guys <laughs> are getting attacked. All these kids from Chicago are getting just swarmed, right? And Jaleel comes in and we talk about it. I'm like, Jaleel, here's my deal, man. We got to have you. You know, I'm going to give you the speech. And I said, now, I know, however, it's unlikely, but I need to know a couple things. One is uh, where do we stack up, you know? And he says, Coach, you know, when that new stadium is done from the drawings I've seen, and I look at this practice facility, it's as good. I've been to Carolina, Duke, Kentucky. I've been everywhere. And he says, it's, it's world class. And he goes, no, I'm not coming here. But, you know, <laughs> he goes, but I love it. He said, and I said, well, you just tell everybody you love it. And, uh, and, and, and so we, got, we started to get kids on campus. And the facilities, you know, got people, oh, that's nice. Oh, I, I like that, you know. Uh, but until we made the NCA, until we started having some things happen, like uh, being ranked and those sorts of things, really didn't ring the bell a whole bunch, mm -hmm. you know. And it, kids liked it, but we weren't necessarily attracted you know, the type of class we're going to have right now. And I think we're probably going to have, even without Andrew White, a top 25 class in some um, people's minds. And if you had Andrew White to that, maybe a top uh, 15 class in the country. And you know when you're recruiting a solid like that, um, it, that's good. Now, when they get on campus and what their motivation is and how hard they work and everything that goes with it, and it, health-wise, there's a lot of things that go with it. But it's a good start to have a lot of people liking the guys you've, you're, gonna, you're about to sign. Tim, does that change the direction of your offense or defense or a combination of both when you have that many people coming back on board? Well, I've had five jobs, and, uh, and every one of them uh, was uh, uh, a, a, a pretty big startup. You know, like taking a social <laughs> media company and trying to make oh, it work, right? right, right and, right. Uh, you know, uh, and so uh, trying to find an investor on that deal, right? So when I look at things, uh, it, it was um, – I'm more like a high school coach, I think, than a college coach, which is I think I'm uh, fairly um, well-rounded enough. This is my 20th season as head coach. Whatever kind of comes to the table, I think we'll figure out what to run. Mm -hmm. You know, last year we weren't very good offensively, but we could really kind of get going offensively, and we could get hot. So we could do a lot of different things, uh, and all of a sudden Pitchford would get going. Well, then Petaway do his deal. All of a sudden you turn around, there's Siobhan Shields hitting you right in the, you know, uh, uh, right in the gut, you know. And, and so I, I think we'll be better this year. We'll have more options. Uh, but we're going to be a uniquely different team, I think, uh, when Walt Pitchford is our center compared to when a guy's like Moses Abraham or Jake Hammond's our center. So well, we're, we've got a couple different packages we're working on now that I'm excited about. But um, we've got a lot of returners. We're going to run a lot of the same stuff because it worked for us. So, Tim, you, you talk about this uh, coming to Nebraska, the facilities and these stories that you tell. And one of the things that Nebraska fans have probably fallen in love with is your ability to, to entertain, you know, off the court and on the court as well. You're actually pretty fun to watch. Um, but the, this social media persona, like you're kind of the king of the selfie, right? I mean, we see these, these selfie pics. Look, That's not even self what, Can you explain this one? Can you tell the story? Yeah, the guy said, uh, Coach, uh, with your chicken little sandwich, do you want to get a selfie? I said, Absolutely. And so we did it. And, uh, and then uh, it was funny. KFC, the national office, uh, tweeted, get buckets, Coach Miles, which I thought was really <laughs> that's, good. That's nice. It was big time. Yeah. You get you yeah. a deal? You get no, a deal? I didn't get a deal. I just, you know, I, I, we'll work you know, on that. But it was great. There was two guys in the picture, and they were just having a good time. And so I kind of just hammed it up and jumped out the window for them. And well, when you, when you think about things like this, I mean, is this something that you've kind of come up on your own as just a way to, to differentiate yourself? Or what does it mean for you to kind of be that level of, of engaged you well, know, with your, your, your players and fans and everything? First of all, I think, we, you know, we started CSU 
uh, you have to build your brand. When, when I was a small college coach and when I was uh, at North Dakota State starting out from Division II to Division I, that's where we made the transition, we went on an old uh, – uh, you know, a uh, coffee tour, right? We get on a bus with the coaches yeah. and you catch coffee yeah. in uh, Mayville, lunch in uh, Carrington, and then dinner in Bismarck. <laughs> and you just sit there and you'd stump like a politician, you know? <laughs> and and then social media came in and Twitter came about, I think in 08 or 09. In 09, our, our uh, Ben Schumann came up, our director of media at Colorado State, and says, Coach, we need you. you. You know, we think you've got a personality to really identify with younger people. So we want you to get on Facebook and Twitter. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, you know, right. I know what Facebook is. I said, I graduated with 13 kids in my graduating class. So I know where they all are. Right. <laughs> they know where to find me. I know where to find them. We yeah. don't need to be online. Yeah. I'm already online. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so um, then um, I said, what's this Twitter about? And he says, well, it's, it's perfect. It's right up your alley. It's these kind of random thoughts, about 140 characters. And I'm, I'm in. I'm in. This is great. I thought you could only do it once a day. <laughs> and I didn't realize you could do it over and over and over. So right away, I just tweet here and tweet a couple of days, and then all of a sudden, hey, I can say whatever I want. You know? So, you know, we started it, and, and we started, we'd go to a restaurant, we're going to give away, uh, hey, meet me here, we're going to give away posters, hey, meet, you know, do this, and, and just started kind of identifying, taking questions, Q&A, and oh, yeah. just whatever, right? And, um, and uh, you know, No Sit Sunday, really, the only way we got that out was Chris Harriman said to me, you know, Coach, if we uh, beat uh, um, uh, Wisconsin, I think we're in the NCAA tournament. I said, no kidding, but it rhymed with sit, Chris. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so that came up with No Sit Sunday. Okay, yeah. And we, oh, yeah. I said, you tweet it, I'll tweet it. Seamus tweeted it, and pretty soon it was everywhere. So I think it's important in the selfie deal the, it, it really happened last year when uh, we had just beaten, I think, Ohio State. Mm -hmm. And, and we had done a whole bunch of selfies anyway. I posed for every picture. I've looked at the back of every phone in mankind yeah. in Nebraska. <laughs> and and uh, but a, a young guy, yeah, was walking up, and, and he goes, Coach, can we get one? It was like my Bo Derek moment. He was running at me, you know, and I was hugging him. Oh. And what's funny is the first picture, you see the cop is pulling my belt oh, to get me get out away. of there, you know. <laughs> and I'm hugging that guy pretty tight. He can't even get me away. Yeah, so. right <laughs> yeah, right from there, it kind of took off, and that went viral. And after that, it's just well, it's been on. How about, I mean, how's my form here? Well, let's my, see here. Let's get am you. Am I doing well? <laughs> Well, well, you get the beard shot. Yeah, so, that's yeah, good. You know, it's classic. When it yeah, goes away, wild. you'll be proof yeah, that it exists in the it. first place. <laughs> These teeth are well paid for. But, uh, <laughs> you know. let, me, let me ask you a, a, a hard-hitting personnel question here. Right. I'm, I'm not Better take a drink. Yeah, take a drink. This, this will be good. Last year, about halfway through the season, you had to make a roster change. And you and your staff had to find somebody in the backcourt to help out. And, and Benny Parker was challenged by you guys to, to step up, play a bigger role, especially from a defensive standpoint, and he really responded to that. What's the next step in his game, and has he taken that step in the offseason? Well, you know, he was challenged in the preseason, in the offseason the year before, and actually he came through because uh, Deverell Biggs had been suspended for the first two games, and Benny played lights out against Florida Gulf Coast. I remember a play where he made – uh, where we went down and scored a layup, and they were fast breaking down, and Brett Comer from Florida Gulf Coast is coming down, and Benny dives and tips it away and, and dives out of bounds, and we go back down the other way for another fast break, which kind of broke the game open. And then uh, we brought Deverell in, and, and, and we had to make that personnel change. But I don't think that's more of Deverell and I just couldn't get on the same page. I think coincidentally at the same time, um, Benny uh, started playing. We started playing bigger, got Siobhan Shields from the four spot to his natural small forward spot. David Rivers also stepped in, another glue guy. Mm -hmm. And then when Benny came in, he was the energizer, Benny, right? He came in and really created and made an impact on the game defensively. And I think those two guys, the bigger lineup, Shields back at his natural position. Now all those things kind of fell into place. Everybody was a little more at ease. There, you know, I'm better when we have a fewer numbers of rotation mm -hmm. uh, because I, I'm easily confused. And uh, so that way I can just keep it real simple. Like, oh, I only have two subs. I'll play those two. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and so we end up being a better team. So, you know, I, I think that uh, to put it on just a personnel change, eh, I think that going bigger, more natural spots, and all of a sudden then Benny really, who had actually played pretty well early, maintaining that, hey, when I get my chance, I'm going to do it really did a spectacular job for us. What do you expect from him from an offensive standpoint? Can he provide more this year, or is, or is his role still with this new team 
the same as it was last year, come in, provide a spark, be a defensive stopper? Well, his primary thing is to come in and be a defensive energizer where he can provide us transition opportunities. And what you see us getting are those what I call um, run out layups, those, cat, those, those pick sixes, so to speak, since we were talking football earlier. There you go. I know a little bit of football. <laughs> right? It's a tough sport, man. It, they yeah. go from offense to defense to bring in two special teams. Yeah. Like we do it 70 <laughs> times a game. Yeah, exactly. right? Anyhow, so I digress. So, um, but as we go, um, you know, Benny is going to create um, – transition opportunities for us. And now we get that easy scoring. That's really difficult on an opponent. But I, I would expect Benning to make more outside shots this year, too. He wears number three. It's about time he starts making some. <laughs> Tim, do you expect to see <clears throat> uh, different defenses with respect to Petaway and, and Shields this year or something to try to cut down their effectiveness? Because they really – I mean, they're great players and did a great job for you last year. Yeah, I think that, you know, because, uh, you know, Deverell was a very prolific player, 10 mm. points a game, you know, uh, and then once we took him out, people didn't quite realize it was going to be those two guys with Walt Pitchford. But, um, you know, I, we're going to get people's best shot. I would expect – uh, we're doing some different things in practice, uh, which is, uh, makes always ratchets it up the energy level, te intensity level in practice, too, to try and get those guys prepared for anything. And what I've been impressed with is even though we've kind of, uh, you know, we don't execute perfectly, we're communicating and we're aware of what's going on. Anytime you get your team aware of what they're supposed to be doing, eventually they'll get it right. And when you look at this Big Ten lineup, you got Wisconsin, Michigan, Michigan State. I don't even name them all. Well, no, <laughs> no I'm just going to go to the top three. Or, okay. And you guys are in there, too, uh, right in that realm. What other teams do you look at? What other team or team teams do you look at that really think you think have a shot at jumping up into that well, top I, division? I look at, you know, new talent always kind of concerns me, no matter what. You know, now if you're Kentucky, it doesn't. But uh, yeah. if you're everybody else, now I know D'Angelo Russell and, and the Blackburn kid at, at Indiana are supposed to be lights out. But anytime somebody's bringing in, depending on a new freshman or a new whatever, you know, you know that's a little more difficult. So I look at Illinois, first of all, redshirted two Division One transfers who are outstanding. Plus, they brought in only one big-time <laughs> recruit, uh, Laron Black, who I think is going to make a difference for him. I expect Illinois to be very good. And Minnesota also returns a whole bunch of guys. I think they're quietly – um, sitting on some talent that's going to be pretty good, too. Um, you know, just as you look at things, uh, you know, I, 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 it, it's hard to tell where some of those other teams are going to be. I don't know anything about Rutgers or Maryland at this point, but I know Mark is uh, Turgeon, whose dad lives in town, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, loves his new uh, – uh, uh, he's young guys, but they're young guys. So you're going to have some peaks and valleys. Well, as we uh, talk with Coach Miles here, let's take a look at some of the highlights. Just some highlights from last year that will kind of roll as we uh, go through this conversation. And it was obviously a special season for Nebraska fans to see Husker basketball in the, uh, in the national conversation a year ago. And obviously, as Adrian mentioned, that raises certain expectations for a program. Do you have to approach it differently with your kids Last year, you kind of were under the radar. This year, you go in with, as Aid mentioned, those expectations that you're in the top half of the Big Ten Conference. Well, expectations are great. You know, what you got to be careful of is, is complacency. And, and complacency is not laziness. It's a lack of urgency, usually. You know, guys are used to being good, just kind of getting the routine, and they don't have that same, um, you know, killer mentality or that, you know, we were – uh, 11th out of 12th in the league, one in five in the league. You talk about playing with urgency, right. desperation, you know, just to salvage uh, any kind of season. And so we started that way, and then we fed off that. So I don't know if we were any good last year, but we got hot. And this year our idea is to be a good team all year through. Our kids have worked very hard in the spring, very hard in the summer, and certainly this fall. Uh, now getting them to go out and just relax and play. You know, you've done all the work. Now relax and enjoy that work and put it to use and play with that defensive urgency and that urgency on the, on the, on the boards that we need if we're going to be a good Big Ten team. So Nebraska football this year has looked at Amir Abdul as a, as a leader, you know, and, and off the court and the way he just presents himself. And, you know, if you look at your team, you know, who are these natural leaders that are coming into their own? Or, or you know, Petaway is doing a lot of great things on the court, but who's going to lead this team for Nebraska? Well, I wouldn't, you know, First of all, Amir Abdullah is an unbelievable leader to me. You hate to even, you know, it's like the old Rex Burke 
uh, Burkhead too. You know, you hate to compare them to anybody right. because they're such great guys and and such special athletes. But you know, uh, on our team, you know, I look at guys and and how they've matured. Siobhan Shields is just a world class kid. You know, um, and uh, on off the floor everywhere. Turan, you know, the time he takes for young people and. Um, uh, and, and just his ability to connect. And he's got the best smile if he'd ever use it. You know, <laughs> and, and I promise if he got me to the Sweet 16, I'd get a, a red star tattoo right here. You know, now, uh, um, I want to get to the Sweet 16, and then somehow i got to buy my way out of that. <laughs> you know, when he's older. It's a little, I mean, a little breaking yeah, news. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the star tattoo for yeah, the Sweet 16. Yeah, yeah well, that's what I've, I think I've informed him. You know, I started about winning an NCAA game. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's got to be the Sweet yeah. 16. <laughs> I might have even told him. In Final Four. I don't remember, but uh, maybe I'll go with that. Yeah, I mean, just keep pushing it back. I'm sure, he didn't watch this. Nobody Three time national champion. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, where you get the star test. So, uh, but uh, you know, you look at these guys; they're great guys. Walt Pitchford has shown so much more maturity. You know, uh, he, he's a guy that took two shots the other night uh, against Southwest Minnesota State, who was so well coached by my former point guard uh, Brad Bigler, <laughs> who did an outstanding job. And ran, you know, I get out coached by a lot of people, but it's harder when they. I used to tell him what to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's a, a fine young coach. But, you know, Walt took two shots, didn't make either of them. One of their game plans was to sell out and not let him get any, any shots. They just locked him up. And, um, and, and, and it was just Walt, you know, would normally maybe get upset or, or kind of get, you know, out of uh, kilter. He was perfect the whole night. I was really proud of him. And now we need to get him more shots but uh, and more makes for sure. And, and, but as we look at those things, those are really, that's really progress to me to watch that maturity. Ty Webster got such great experience during the summer playing international basketball, testing himself against some of the absolute best in the game. How did that change him going into this season? Well, I think his confidence is really good. You know, I think it started in May. Uh, he went to May session and June session in the summer so he could be out for July. And then he was two weeks late uh, to school. So we wanted to make sure and give him enough credits. Uh, so when he came late, you know, he was going to be all right academically. Uh, Dennis LeBlanc, uh, our academic uh, uh Coordinated an outstanding job that way. Uh, but when you look at things, you know, he, uh, Petaway dr drug him to the gym every day. I don't care. They'd come twice a day. They'd be in there all the time, you know. And it was just unbelievable, you know. And that was supposed to be their off month. And they were in there constantly. And then, and then you look at, the, you know, you played against Lithuania twice. You played against Turkey. Uh, you played in, in China. You played uh, in Korea. Uh, you, you go out and you play the United States of America, right? And, uh, uh, you know, that, that's unbelievable competition. And Ty had some big games and some not-so-good games. But at the same time, uh, it makes coming back and playing against, uh, uh, you know, our backups a little easier. And so I think his confidence, his shot looks terrific. And, and we're going to try and get him off the ball, too. I think he can play a couple different positions. Well, Nebraska going to dive right in this weekend, Sunday, game one of the 2014-2015 season. And it doesn't stop after that. You just start going. Best of luck to you as you get started on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, Coach. Tuesday, Saturday yeah. on the road at Rhode Island. So uh, ready or not, here we come. Exactly. Well, Coach, it's been a pleasure to have you on. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Appreciate Jeff. you guys. Up yeah. next on the wrap-up, Sean Callahan is here with all the latest Big Red recruiting news. And as we go to break, well, there's Blake's selfie with Coach Miles. That, that turned out well, although, Coach, you look a little dour there. I can understand yeah. sitting next to Blake. I wouldn't be that happy either. I he looks really scary to me. I don't know what's going on. Talk about a smile. Look at that in our form. Yeah, we're, we're back in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Were those teeth faithful?
Thanks for joining us tonight on The Wrap-Up. I'm Kevin Kugler. Be sure to vote on this week's sideline survey question. Which game is the biggest in the Huskers' final three regular season games? 85% of you are saying Wisconsin, 11% Minnesota, 4%. Iowa. You can visit our Facebook page or the wrap up website and vote in our unscientific poll. Well, let's get back to football. Time now to welcome Sean Callahan from Husker Online. Hi, Sean. You guys had selfies. You guys had a little fun on the, with Coach Miles. <laughs> yeah. It's impossible it's to talk to Coach Miles and not enjoy yourself. He warned yeah. me not to drink out of his mug. Well, yeah. I think that's a, a good warning. You know, he's been under a lot of stress lately, a lot of practices, you know, germ season. Don't we got to that. travel to Madison this week. That's right. I want to get sick. You don't want to get Why? sick. A lot of energy in that mud. <laughs> that is exactly. true. That is true. Uh, Nebraska <laughs> picks up a big-time commit from a very familiar area for the Huskers, Sean. Yeah, they go back down to New Orleans and get Stanley Morgan. I think and if you're a national guy and you see this, you might be surprised because Stanley Morgan, a highly sought-after SEC receiver, uh, had several offers. Didn't have LSU or didn't have Alabama, but had basically the rest of the SEC, had Ohio State, was a member of the rivals' uh, top 250. Uh, the key, though, is Nebraska got Stanley Morgan to visit for a home game, and his mother came on the trip, and he's friends with Kendall Bussey. Uh, so I think all those things added up, along with the large amount of New Orleans players uh, currently on the roster, and he came up here, had such a great visit, and he basically said, he goes, you know, I, if I wouldn't have come up there, obviously I would have never known what Nebraska was like. And, and just seeing that, and, you know, Blake, you can attest to that. You know so many guys that have played here that aren't from the area that when they get here, it totally changes their mindset about Nebraska. Yeah, it does. And I think that the city of Lincoln itself is doing a lot to help the university in recruiting. When you come here and you see the downtown Haymarket area, you see the arena and everything that Coach Miles, the basketball team is going to be on television more this year and be talked about. So everything's really playing in the favor of getting these out-of-town recruits to at least come see it. And once they see it, it, at least he came on the last warm-ish weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Minnesota probably Perfect. won't be as good of a weekend no, bringing some not, guys not next quite. weekend. Yeah. But, you know, this is a, a huge need, guys. As, as you know, Kenny Bell is gone, and um, they, they need playmakers, a receiver. Stanley Morgan, uh, we just came out with our top ten players of the best hands in the country. He's considered one of the uh, – has some of the best hands of any receiver uh, in this year's recruiting class. So he's a tough guy that makes catches over the middle – uh, does not drop the ball very often. Not a speed burner, though. This is a, he's not not a slow guy by any means. No, but he's I mean, not a guy that you're going to look at and say this is a speed burner kind of. Yeah, guy. it's it, you know I wouldn't put him in that Kenny Bell category, but he's somebody I think talented enough that could get on the field next year as a freshman, uh, considering when you, you look at who they lose on this football team with Kenny Bell. Does he have the raw talent to get that speed, to work on that speed? <sighs> it's hard to say. I mean, I don't know if he's a pure track runner, but he's mm -hmm. fast enough. I mean, mm -hmm. I think he, he's good enough, fast enough to make plays, uh, but he's not going to, you know, win, you know, make 80-yard catches all the time. But I think he's definitely fast enough to, to make an impact here in Nebraska. And run good routes. And run good routes. And yeah. catch the ball. Yeah. I and mean, that's okay. – as we learned at Jordan Westerkamp, I mean, yeah. he can get pretty far by running good routes, catching the football. Had a winner on our second Big Red trivia question tonight. Daniel Betts knew the answer to this question. How many yards Nebraska's defense limited Kansas to in 2010? Just 87 yards of total offense. Congratulations to Daniel Betts. The winner in our second Big Red trivia question. Let's go back from New Orleans and come back in-state for our in-state recruit up in Papillion. Yeah, tonight we're talking about Ryan Arrett at Papio South, and they're really one of the surprise stories this year in high school football. Going into the year, Papio South, led by Coach Walt Olson, who won state titles at Hastings, had never uh, even won a high school playoff game. And this year, not only have they won in the playoffs, they're now in the semifinals. They play Friday night uh, against Creighton Prep uh, to go here to Memorial Stadium. And this Ryan Arrett, who's con committed right now to South Dakota State, uh, I feel the Jackrabbits are getting the steal of a player. Um, you look at his development. Steve Warren has worked with him, I know, a lot over the offseason and, and developed this guy and has raved about him to us and, and where he's come and gone. Um, and he's just gotten better and better each week. I mean, I think he's uh, a guy that, you know, you never know. There could be some higher profile programs that might make their way back into Papio South come January um, and, and look at a Ryan Arith, um, you know. But he, as far as I know, he's obviously still committed to South Dakota State. Uh, a great frame, a legitimate 6'4", 250 guy. Might even be bigger than that. That was his uh, weight back in the spring. So is he, I mean, he's listed a defensive tackle. He's obviously going to add some weight, but he's playing tight end. 
So he's got the athletic yeah, I mean, ability to play tight end as well. He's a defensive end, defensive tackle, tight end. I think he can grow into a lot of things. I mean, this kid has grown and developed as much as any guy in the state this year. And uh, it was Ross Jernstrom, even we were at the press conference, and he goes, who is that kid? He, he really stood out in the playoff win against Miller North. And Miller North was undefeated, and they just got a really big win over them uh, this past Friday night. So is he pretty comparable to uh, Zach Potter? Uh, he's not as tall. I mean, Zach okay. Potter was a legit 6'7". I mean, he... He had a frame that I haven't really seen in a lot of in-state kids. Deshaun Neal, but, you know, Potter, when you look at him, just had a much bigger, bigger frame, almost a, a bat. Zach would always tell me if Creighton would have offered him a basketball scholarship, he would have <laughs> taken the Creighton basketball scholarship yeah. over playing football at Nebraska. He, he was the, the original Jasker. <laughs> uh, as far as commits go, are you anticipating any? Are there rumors in the mill that there may be a commit or two coming down the line, or is this going to be a quiet time for Nebraska? Um, it, there's some stuff going on. The coaches are on the road. I thought maybe the biggest development over the bye week was Rich Fisher was at Sharon Jones's game, and he's a four-star quarterback um, out of California from Quincy Nunawas High School, uh, where Nebraska's had a lot of success there uh, at Rancho Cumunga High School. And um, he's committed to Florida, but as we know, the situation in Florida is dicey. And uh, keep your eyes on Sharon Jones. I think Nebraska will try to get him here for a visit. Will it be for the Minnesota game? Will it be later on in December? Um, that remains to be seen. But I think he's definitely a target for Nebraska right now at quarterback. So uh, we were talking earlier about the college football polls that came out today. Nebraska dropping three on their bye week. Does this play at all into recruiting teams see these polls or, do, or recruits, I should say, see these polls? Or does it matter that much at this point? I don't think it matters. I mean, I think if anything, it just creates good talk each week by doing these polls. But uh, I don't think, you know, it changes so much. I mean, Nebraska, if they look good and they beat Wisconsin, they can move back up to 10, 11, 12. Um, so I think the big, big thing, biggest thing with Nebraska guys is they haven't beaten a ranked team yet. They have one victory over a bowl-eligible team. That's Miami. I think my, Nebraska, these next three weeks are going to really tell us all we need to know about where Nebraska should fall in that college football playoff poll. Yep. And you mentioned those last three weeks. Of course, the big three to close the season in the West. You've got Wisconsin. You've got Minnesota, who's been playing good football lately. And you have Iowa, which from week to week, you're not quite sure what exactly Iowa is going to be. But you got a little shorter week, and you got to go on the road. So you cannot certainly say. Minnesota here. cracked the poll today. They're Minnesota, 25. Five teams now from the Big Ten in that top 25, including Minnesota. Now, Minnesota's got a tough test this weekend where they've got to deal with Ohio State, which is not going to be easy. But, of course, Urban Meyer is concerned about a letdown, and he's going to be going up against a team that is very physical. Cold and, weather, Minneapolis. Well, and they know the one thing that you always say about Minnesota, they know who they are, maybe better than any team in the conference. They know they're going to run the football. They know they're going to play good defense. Jerry Kill's squad has an identity, and they and that's what he's had everywhere he's gone. And they don't try to be anything that they're not. And, hey, Kevin, they know they're tough. Yeah. They know that. Yep. A lot of teams don't know that. No, they're well they aware. Do. They know that yeah. very, very well. So, and they're uh, playing with a lot of confidence right now. They've got all their trophies you know, all coming back <laughs> home now. They're very excited. They're very confident. Uh, and they're looking at this with three weeks to go saying, we're right at why not us yeah. is what Minnesota's saying. Kill does more with less really than any coach in college football, maybe other than David Cutcliffe at Duke. I mean, those two guys this year, what they do with the types of recruits they get, they just find ways to win when nobody ever projects them. I mean, Minnesota to be an 8-9 win program for two years in a row, uh, that, that's a heck of a coaching job up yeah. there. So if you look at a team like Wisconsin, who's 7-2, and two, and Wisconsin's been a, a – top of the Big Ten for a while. I mean, what types of recruits does Wisconsin get? Where do they recruit from? Because, you know, we talk a lot about Nebraska recruiting, but it's interesting, you know, how does Michigan State get these kids? How does Wisconsin get these kids? They're gonna well, Wisconsin's formula under Alvarez and, and Belima before that, uh, they would get the linemen and guys all in state. They'd build a great mm -hmm. walk-on program just like Bob Devaney taught Barry Alvarez. And then, obviously, they'd go down to Florida and Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, they've shifted more west now because of guys like Bill Bush and Gary Anderson uh, with all their connections out west so we've seen Wisconsin even get some JUCOs they've changed it a little bit uh, but their identity I think will always be getting those big linemen from the mm -hmm. states of Wisconsin and Minnesota absolutely. and places like that absolutely well Nebraska <coughs> does head to Madison Wisconsin this weekend to, pl or to play the Badgers and that starts that three game stretch for a preview of that Wisconsin Nebraska game and our predictions head over to our Facebook page of the wrap-up website and click the prediction Adrian Blake and I will tell you exactly what to expect on Saturday. That matchup from Camp Randall Stadium, ABC Television. Blake, if you're planning to attend, wear a heavy coat. I was going to paint my chest. Were you? Yes. 
That's a bad idea. <laughs> okay, I'll bring so it So many, so many ways. Okay. Please, please don't ever mention that again. <laughs> Next Tuesday, we'll have a recap of that Wisconsin game. Nebraska Director of Football Operations Jeff Jamrog will join us. That's next Tuesday, 7 o'clock Central Time on NET1. But our NET sports crew is going to be working before then. This weekend, NSAA High School Volleyball Championships. It starts this Saturday. The championships are live from the Bob Devaney Sports Center. 9 a.m. Central start continues throughout the day. And then about this on Sunday, the crew goes right back because they say, we don't have enough volleyball. We want more. Maryland comes into Lincoln to take on the Huskers. That game's 2 o'clock Central time right here on NET. Again, go to the website, check out the prediction, check out the poll, do everything you need to do on the website, check it all out, and get ready for that Nebraska-Wisconsin game this weekend. And download the apps. You can watch the volleyball this weekend as well. Our thanks to Sean Callahan and Tim Miles for joining us tonight. And also thanks to Josh and the boys in the Wrap-Up Call Center. Now, for Adrian Fiala and Blake Lawrence, I'm Kevin Kugler. We'll see you right back here next Tuesday night on NET's Big Red Wrap-Up. Good night, everybody. Video on demand presentation of Big Red Wrap Up is made possible by the following sponsors. Big Red Wrap Up thanks these sponsors.